Just amazing how simple songs can be expressed in such exquisite quality. Let's honor the Lord for such gifts as has been expressed today. And we thank God for all the choirs and all the song ministers who have ministered uh, today. And we are honored uh, to have uh, another of our guest speakers uh, showing up in our service. We have Bishop Tudor Bismarck and Pastor Chichi Bismarck with us. It's an honor to have you back home to Greater Works, and we, we are going to receive from him uh, tomorrow. But this morning, we had an excellent time with Bishop Mike Okonko, and he's here again this evening. Uh, we have a double header tonight, uh, so we're not going home quickly. Uh, Bishop Mike is going to minister, and after that, Pastor Matthew will come and minister uh, tonight. It's a double header, amen. Um, I introduced Bishop Mike this morning. Uh, some of you were not here, but he is a Christian statesman. Uh, he pretends to look young, but he's, uh, he's packed up quite a bit of age. Uh, and still very active and effective in the gospel. I told the people in the morning service that uh, we keep bringing him here because I want to be like him when I grow up. Uh, and Bishop Mike is going to be 78 next month and, uh, and still effective and preaching. And uh, I can see him preaching into his 90s at this age. Uh, he still travels all over the world and, and still ministers to God. The, the interesting thing is that he's still relevant. He's still on the cutting edge. He still has a word in season. And, and he's still fresh when he ministers. And when, you, when he ministers, you hear the heart of somebody who has walked with the Lord for a very long time. Uh, some people know God very shallowly and try to teach very deeply. Uh, but he knows God very deeply and try to teach very simply. Uh, the more you know the Lord, the simpler you become with the way you express the word of God. And we are honored to have you, Bishop, uh, in the house. Let's right, welcome God servant Bishop Mike Okonko. Bishop Mike Okonko is the founder and presiding bishop of the Redeemed Evangelical Mission headquartered in Lagos, Nigeria, with churches planted across the globe. He is an elder statesman in the Christian body whose influence touches the continent of Africa and the rest of the world. Bishop Michael Konko is the convener of the Communion of Covenant Ministers International. He is a trustee and also a member of the National Advisory Council of the Pentecostal Fellowship of Nigeria. He is a dynamic conference speaker, crusade evangelist and a TV and radio host. He is a strong and respected voice all over Africa. We must change the narratives. As God's people. Greater works. Let's welcome Bishop Mike Okonko. Lift up your hands and shout hallelujah. If you are alive and well, shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Turn around to somebody by you, tell him, I am blessed and highly favored. I am, loved by God. I am deeply loved by God. I am extravagantly blessed. Am extravagantly blessed. Do you believe that? Yes. Okay, say to yourself, I am blessed and highly favored. I am deeply loved by God. I am extravagantly blessed. Go ahead, give God a big hand clap. Glory to God, glory to God. You may be seated. On this awesome presence of the Holy Spirit, once again, I want to celebrate the iconic, quintessential man of God, Dr. Mensa Otabio. Thank you so very much for what you do in our continent, for what you do all over the world your voice that is so relevant in our day. You know, like I said in the morning, some of the things we are witnessing here 
as Vince, we used to go to United States, Western world to pay money just to be there. But what a blessing that you don't have to go far. You, it is happening right here in Accra, Ghana. A ministry with excellence, a ministry that is futuristic, relevant at the cutting edge. What more can you look for? Bishop, I was saying in the morning, when I looked at this place, it is wow. You know, <laughs> I felt like going home and destroying my auditorium and starting again. <laughs> Glory to God. This is, this is good. This is good. And, and if you are a member of ICGC, you should be proud of yourself. Come on, celebrate yourself. Bishop and Chichi, good to see you again. Good to see you. You've been all over the place. I've been following, tracking you. I'm glad you are here. Good to see you. Amen? Well, let's go into the Word of God. And very briefly, I'm looking at the time. We'll, we'll just hit it and run. I'll, give, I'll read two scriptures for foundation and then we go into the word. Romans chapter 15 verse 4. Romans 15 verse 4. For whatsoever things were written aforetime were written for our learning that we through patience and comfort of the scriptures my have hope. All those things that were documented of old, the experiences that many men of God, saints of God went through in the old time are documented for our benefits. We can draw inspiration from them. And uh, turn to First Timothy chapter four, verse I mean chapter two, verse four. First book of Timothy chapter two, verse four. Who will have all men to be saved and to come unto the knowledge of the truth. Verse 5. For there is one God and one mediator between God and man. The man, Christ Jesus. I will be speaking briefly on what I've told, titled Go for the Spoil." You are not supposed to struggle. Go for what? The spoil. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, thank you for your presence. Thank you for your grace that is evident in this conference. Thank you for clarity of thoughts and precision of expression. The eyes, ears, and hearts of your people are open to see, to receive the mysteries of the kingdom. Father, no one lives here the same way he came. There are things which only you can do. And so we trust you tonight that you will touch every man, every woman, every boy or girl at the point of their needs. Kapo Sato Ribada. I declare to you that in this conference, you will forget all the pains, all the aches, all your disappointments of the past. In the name of Jesus Christ. You will lay hold on that which God has predetermined for you before the foundation of the world. It's a new day for you. I proclaim that every siege in your life is broken. Every siege is broken. Yeah. Every wilderness of experience in your life comes to an end. Yeah. In the name of Jesus Christ. Yeah. Go for the spoil. Enough of struggling. Enough of trying to make it happen. 
The spoil is hanging like a loose fruit on the tree. And here we are, you know, still struggling. It's been paid for. Everything you need has been paid for. The scripture says, blessed be God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who had blessed us with every spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ. We are already blessed. Grace and peace be multiplied through the knowledge of God the Father and of our Lord Jesus Christ. According as his divine power has given to us all things that pertain unto life and godliness. It's already provided. Go for it. I said go for it. Stop being docile and indifferent. It's already yours. The greatest thing that can happen to any person who is not born again is to be born again. That's the most important thing. And the most important thing for anyone who is already born again in church is for you to have a mind renewal. Once your mind is renewed, there is nothing that can stop you. You see, that's why you don't come to church only on conference days. No. You have to, because every day you come, the scripture says his mercies are new every day. And the path of the joys is like a shining light that shines brighter and brighter onto a perfect day. So you don't just come once and say, well, you go to bed and become docile. The devil is not sleeping. The scripture says that we should be sober, be vigilant because your adversary, the devil as a roaring lion, walketh about. It's a present continuous tense. Walk it about. He's looking for who to locate. I declare to you, he will not locate you. Yeah. That devil will not locate you. Yeah. You are too precious in the hands of God for the devil to locate you. Clapo sete emoji. Engalamo sete libo coco. Hallelujah. I said, Hallelujah. I said, Hallelujah. You are part of God's global agenda for success. You are not an appendage. You are not, it's, it's not putting up with you. You are part of his program. Ever before you were born, he knew you. When you were still in your mother's womb, he ordained you as a prophet to the nations. He knew you and predetermined your end before the beginning. So how can you fail? I say, how can you fail? It is impossible. <laughs> Glory to God. For he whom he did for know, he also did predestinate to be confirmed to the image of his son that he may be firstborn among many brethren. And those whom he predestinated, he called. Those he called, he justified. And those he justified, he glorified. Called to glory. Not called to shame. Not called to disgrace. Not called to humiliation. Not called to embarrassment. Ah, you will get there. I said you will get there. You will get there. You will, hit, you will hit your target. You are not an accident of birth. You are not. According as he has chosen us in him, before the foundation of the world, to be holy and without blame, faultless before him in love, chose you to be faultless. That's how does God see you in his perspective? You are faultless. I love that. Fault, faultless. That's why you can come to him boldly. Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. I said shout hallelujah. Is the one who saved you and called you. Not according to your own works but according to his own purpose and grace, which was given us before the foundation of the world. So all these things 
have been perfected before you came on the scene. Before your father and mother came together. He said, this one has already made it. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> you see, we must, our mindset has to change. That this servant mentality in the believer, I'm, I'm sick and tired of it. Servant mentality. And, and that's what, how many believers live. You must begin to live as a son. For we have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear. But the spirit of adoption. Whereby we cry, daddy, daddy, daddy. God is your daddy. Hallelujah. My mind goes to David. You all know David. Every believer should have heard about David. I'm sure you have heard about him. <laughs> but most time what we know about David was about how he messed up. But we can glean a lot from the life of David. So much. It was David who taught us that many are they who rise up against us. Many are they who say there is no hope for us in God. That is thou, O oh Lord, art a shield to me, my glory and the lifter of, of my head. It's David who taught us that we are encompassed with favor like a shield. Oh yes, surrounds you every day of your life. That we walk on the ground of favor. Oh, Romans 5, 1, 2, 3. He said, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom we have access into this grace wherein I stand. What does that mean? Anywhere I go, it must work. Even if it's not working for anyone, my ground is favored ground. We step on favored ground. That's where we live in as believers. David taught us a lot of things. He said to us that God is an excellent God. That his mind is full of you. When he turns to his laptop or computer or his tele a smartphone, guess which picture he sees? Your picture. Your picture. Your picture. His mind is full of you. Always thinking about how to dispense good on your behalf. That's your God. David, David, David taught us a lot of things. He taught us that lines are falling onto us in pleasant places. It doesn't matter the inflation in Ghana. I come to tell one person, lines are falling onto you. In pleasant places. You have a goodly heritage. Your heritage is a heritage of success, a heritage of achievement, a heritage of excellence, a heritage of breakthrough. You must succeed. David taught us if the foundation be destroyed, what would the righteous do? If you fail to build your foundation, foundated in Christ crucified, that's why Paul, Paul said, henceforth, I wouldn't know anything except Jesus and him crucified. Christ, the wisdom and the power of God. Christ. On Christ, the solid rock, I stand. All other ground. You see, when you know where you are standing, you will not be parroting like the world. Oh, things are wrong in, in, in Ghana. Things are wrong in Nigeria. Who told you? All things are possible to him that what? Believe. Let me, let's, let me show you this scripture. Put it up for us in, in Passion Translation. Mark 9.23. Mark 9.23. 
Look at what he says. Mark 9, 23. Jesus said to, that, to him, in Passion Translation, okay, what do you mean if, if you are able to believe all things are possible to the believer? Give it to me in Message Translation. Message. Jesus said, if, what do you mean if, if, He said, he said, he said, he said, if, if it is possible to heal me today, to deliver me today, to set me free, if it's possible for me to have a husband, if it's possible to have, have a child, if, there are no ifs among believers, anything can happen. Whatever is contending with your victory, it comes to an end now. 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 Glory to God. Sit down, sit down. We are just talking. David taught us. He said, some trust in chariots, some in horses, but we will remember the name of the Lord. He said, we are still risen and standing while our enemy is falling. That's David. He taught us that the earth is the Lord's, the fullness thereof, the world and they that therein. And he says, you want to know the secret of my success? The Lord is my light and my salvation. Who shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When the wicked, even my enemies and foes, came out to eat of my flesh, they stumbled and fell. Though war, war will rise up against me, my heart will not fear. Though war rises up against me, one thing, one thing, one thing. I'll come to Greater Works Conference. That's what he said. He said one thing, if I can find my way to greater works, the enemy is doomed. That is why the enemy of your life is doomed tonight. He's doomed tonight. He's doomed tonight. He's doomed tonight. He's doomed tonight. Lift up your hands and shout hallelujah. Glory to God. Sit down. David had a working knowledge of his relationship with God. Some just have head knowledge. It doesn't go beyond head. It must be coming from within. It must be coming. That's why you need to meditate the word. Let the word of God dwell in you richly. Richly in all wisdom. Let it dwell richly, not sparsely. It's not a hit and run thing. That's your life. That's your life. In the beginning was the word, the word was a God, the word was God. All things were made by Him, and without Him was not anything made that was made in Him was life. The life was a light of men, and the light shined in darkness, and darkness could not comprehend it. And the word became flesh and dwelt amongst us. And we beheld his glory as the only begotten of the Father, full of grace. What, whatever it is that cannot defeat Jesus, it cannot defeat you. As hell could not stop Jesus, no power will stop you. Glory to God. Saul and his army were hiding. You know the story in 1 Samuel 17. They want to bore you. These were covenant people. So that's why you can see two people in church. One is breaking through. The other is sitting down 
and complaining. When the blessing of God is for whosoever, white or black, yellow, green, polka dot, anywhere you are in the continent, some are complaining. May you not be in the company of those who will come to a conference like this and go the same way you came. God is rich unto all that call upon us. No partiality with him. All you need to know is to know. Through knowledge shall the just be delivered. I'm, try, I'm trying to provoke you to, to be addicted to your word and go for the, the spoil that's already provided. You don't need to reinvent the wheel. Have unspoiled principality and power. He made the show of them openly, triumphing over them in it. He displayed his defeat. What are you talking about? Because I want to see you next time to be a manifestation of your testimony. Saul and his army were hiding. Covenant people, having no working knowledge of their covenant, hiding from Goliath. 40 days and 40 nights. First thing they heard in the morning, Goliath's voice. Last thing, Goliath's voice. That shows they were not close to God to hear his voice. Otherwise, why must it be Goliath's voice? That shows how far they have gone from God. Goliath was speaking to them morning and night. For the day's judgment. No wonder they were hiding. Child of God, I'm tired of us with all the abundance provided for us. We are hiding in the trench. Come out of the trench. Enough of hiding. Enough of hiding. Enough of hiding. We have got what it takes. Aren't you? Doesn't it? That is a dog. That's why I love you. Doesn't it? It, 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 it grease my spirit, Bishop, that people are walking about in Africa and they're not bothered about our continent. We say we have leaders. They go to Western world. They see their airports. They see the level of development. They see what, what has been done in deserts. And they will come back and sit down. What manner of people are these? Now is the time to kick them out of office. It's a new day. It's a new day. And they deceive, they keep on every day, every year. I've been hearing this since I was born and since I knew what was going on in politics. They will see young people that you are leaders of tomorrow. That's a lie. You are leaders of today. I said today. Today. Must rebel against this, this type of mediocrity. And for me, I'm, I'm, I'm already embarrassed. When I go around the world, honestly, I, I get embarrassed. Answering in Nigeria. Let me leave Ghana alone.
I get embarrassed. Isn't it a shame? You take the resources you got in your country, you go and buy property all over the world, and leave your own. You know, the irony of it is that some of these people who do this thing, when you go to their villages, you will see a lot of problems there. And they are not solving them. That's what we are seeing. But there, there are demons that are rising. David's are rising up. Somebody shout, I am one of them. Say it again, I am one of them. Then you see, you have been born into this world and to your nation for such a time as this. It's not an accident that you are here. You are a problem solver. You are the solution the world has been waiting for. So David started out of the backside of the desert. He didn't even pay any mind to Goliath. The black American will say, pay him no mind. That's how they say, don't mind him. Pay him no mind. <laughs> Who is this uncircumcised? That he will defy the armies of Israel. Who is this thing? Young people will say this. Is it because of this thing? <laughs> That's how they talk. Is it because of this thing you are ignoring me? <laughs> Glory to God. And his brothers and everyone that knew him tried to talk him out. Listen, at times people who are familiar with you do not understand your working knowledge of God. So they will not be able to relate with you. So you don't, you don't fall for their intimidation or blackmail. The scripture said David walked away, spoke and said, let no man's heart fail him. I am here. So long as I'm, God doesn't need to come down from heaven. I am here. I am here. I can deal with this situation. Can I hear loud amen? amen? I have testimony in my sleeves. The lion came, the bear came, I told them. I ref oh God, look at, look at the mentality of David. He could have said, well, one, my, 90, 100 minus one is still 99. I, I'm satisfied with 99. No! I must take everything the Lord paid for. I'm not going to let even a hoof. I won't make excuses for anything. I will take all. You are in this greater works to take all. You will take all. You will take all. Let me begin to come for a landing because I don't want to take Matthew's time. There was something I will encourage you to look at. Probably you ignore them. First was that the scripture was careful to, to describe the, the, the armor of Goliath. Very intimidating. About four verses was used to describe his armor. Formidable, powerful. I mean, no wonder Saul and his army were afraid. Formidable. And then he said something. Don't forget this. He said, give me who? A man. All I need is what? A man. The rest of the army don't need to fight. I want just a man out of the camp of Israel. The rule of engagement. If you are able to defeat me, me and all our people will serve you. 
But if, if I defeat you, all of you will serve me. Today I found that this issue of fighting is a battle of one man. Not many people. One man. When God want, created the heaven and earth, wanted to fill the earth, one man, Adam. When the earth messed up and all that, he had to look for one man from the old Chaldees, Abraham. One man. When the earth was flooded, he wanted to re- begin to re- refurbish the earth and restore things back. One man, Noah. That's all he needed. When he had to deliver the children of Israel out of bondage. One man, Moses. When they had to possess the land. One man, Joshua. It has always been one man. If I can just find that one man. He's looking for that people who understand the dynamics of one man. That's what we are talking. He wanted to save the world. One man, Mary. She became the instrument. Jesus was born. One man. Goliath was revealing unknown to him the dynamics of warfare. Because when you understand it's a battle of one man, you will go to bed, you will chill. And David became a type of Jesus, the man. And the scripture tells us he went after Goliath. Goliath was boasting in his armor. And David said, You don't understand. This warfare is bigger than swords and spear and bows and arrow. For even though we live in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. Our weapons of warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to pulling down of strongholds and casting down every imagination and every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God and bring into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. That's, that's, he said, be strong in the Lord, not in yourself. In the Lord. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. What mindset? Mindset of victory. We go from glory to glory. And so David said, I come to you in the name of the Lord, of hosts, of the armies of Israel. Whom you have defied this day, will you will he give you into my hands? And David knew as you see, when you know that you know that you know, you you don't say and retreat. David ran. Run towards your victory. Stop running. Run towards it. Not from. Because we fight from victory, not for victory. David knew he already had the victory. If God be for you. (laughs) Doc, I've been looking for the who. Since I read that in the scripture, I've been looking for the who who can be against me. Who can fight against the Lord? No man can. No man will. Who can battle against the Lord? You can't. When he sneezes, everything disappears. <laughs> he ran towards him, knocked him down. Every Goliath in your life is coming down. It's coming down. Goliath went down, and David ran towards him, took his sword. The weapon he trusted dispossessed him of it and cut off his lordship. 
And that's prophetic. He cut off his head. In essence, the rest of them will serve Israel because that's the rule of the game. The rest didn't need to fight. One man did the battle. I come to tell you that 2,000 years ago, the devil was boasting in the value of death and destruction. Boasting against humanity. Give me one man. Give me one man. Just one man. While everyone was hiding. The Bible said God said, I look for a man. I didn't see. My right hand have gotten me the victory. So speaking about Jesus. Jesus said, I'm, I'm the man. And he stepped into that valley. He spoiled the principality and power. He paralyzed the forces of darkness. He made the shoe of him openly and declared that all power in heaven and in earth have been given unto me. He said, in view of that, go, begin to possess your possession. That I will give you nations for your inheritance and the uttermost part of the earth for your possession. Can I hear loud amen? Bishop, when this was happening, children of Israel were just spectators. You know, God wants you to be a spectator. Whatever the devil is doing to you. Be a spectator and just celebrate the awesome God. And watch God flex his muscle. You're not supposed to be agitated, stressed up, and anxious. What will happen? The victory is already gotten. And so the scripture declares that, that the rest of Israel went. The first thing that said, they rose up. Time to rise. They rose up from fear, from intimidation. They rose up from Satan's attack and blackmail. They rose up from where they were hiding. It is time to rise up. We have hidden for too long. They rose up and shouted. I was asking the Lord the other day, what were they shouting? They were shouting victory, victory, victory. And not only were they shouting, they, as they were shouting, their enemy was running. Were run, they was, was running. They were, they were all running. And they were pursuing them. You will pursue. You will overtake. You will recover all. And the Bible said they spoiled the Philistines. That's what we are supposed to do. Not to sit down and be whining and crying. The spoil. We are to take the spoil. Because he has fought the battle. And the victory is won. It is finished. I said it is finished. I said it is finished. Your days of disappointment are over. No more shame in your life. No more disappointment in your life. No more frustration in your life. You will not die prematurely. You will fulfill your years. It's a new day in your life. You will recover all. You will recover all. You will recover all. Lift up your hands and begin to pray in the Holy Ghost. Open your mouth, pray in the Holy Ghost. Karabashataraba. Shalabashata. Shalabashatayaba. Shalabacha. Shalabadaba. Shalaba. Shalabakoriaba Baba. Shatalababa. Shalaba. 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 